Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, Jumbo Commander here, and today I'm going to talk about Brawl. It's a brand new format that Wizards of the Coast just introduced to us. Let's take a look at this format, find out how it works compared to Commander, the format we all love, and maybe talk about a few deck lists. But first off, what is Brawl? Well, Brawl is pretty much Commander, except a few key differences. It's 60 cards instead of 100 cards. It's 30 life instead of 40 life. And one of the biggest differences is it uses the standard card pool. Commander has access to over 17,000 cards. Brawl will have access to a little over a thousand cards. We'll definitely talk about this card pool and find out whether it's an advantage or a disadvantage. Another key difference is that Planeswalkers are okay as commanders. Otherwise, this is pretty close to Commander. So why did we create Brawl if it's so close to Commander? Well, I think one key reason why Brawl was created was because of Arena. Arena is an online form of Magic the Gathering. It's currently in its closed beta testing stage, so not everyone can log on and play it right now, but a lot of people are talking about it, especially because the NDA on Arena was just lifted. People are still unsure about what place Arena will fill in playing Magic Online. It can't do everything Magic Online can do, and it does a lot more than Duels of the Planeswalkers can do. Those are the two other sort of online Magic video games that were or are available. But one thing that we have to know is that Commander, the way that you play it in paper or the way you play it on NTGO, cannot happen on Arena. They're not going to load all of those old cards. And if it does happen on Arena, maybe it happens years and years and years from now. Okay, so they're not going to have access to one of their most popular formats on Arena. And Commander is one of Wizards' most popular formats. If I'm thinking about Brawl replacing all of my Commander decks and going down to the local game store and meeting people, bringing decks to GPs, it, it, can't, it can't measure up. But if I think about Brawl as something that fills a weekday night as I log online, yeah, that seems like it fits pretty well. So let's keep that in the back of our minds, that Brawl might not be fulfilling the same space that Commander does in terms of our magic playtime. I think one of the key differences that a lot of people are fixating on is the standard card pool versus that huge Commander card pool. And so I'm going to be spending a little bit of time talking about that. I think that the power level is going to be something we want to consider. I think that the difference between a super tuned commander deck and a beginning commander deck is a much larger gap than that of brawl decks. I think that brawl decks have a flatter power level because we are limited by the number of cards that we can put in. So we have to ask ourselves, is this narrow card pool better for beginners, easier for them to get into the game and play it? Maybe. Uh, one problem I have, though, is that standard cards are more expensive. <laughs> I wait to buy a bunch of standard cards until after they rotate. I suggest to a lot of people building commander decks to wait and use older cards that are 10 cents, 25 cents. I just built five decks that I introduced to you a little bit later, and most of them are sitting at 100 to 150 dollars. Huh, interesting. That's about half the price of a standard deck, that makes me feel like it is very approachable to beginners, but I know a lot of people that make full-on commander decks for less money than that. Of course, a lot of people make commander decks for way, way more money than that. So this is all stuff to consider. Maybe this flat power level is better for organized play. I think it's really difficult for stores to have organized commander tournaments because of the power level differences. I think that some people come with a very competitive deck, and I think if everyone comes with a competitive deck, man, that's a fun commander tournament. But so often, the power level is so different that I find it to be difficult, really difficult, to be able to have a good time. Everyone brings out their best deck and someone's left behind. Maybe Brawl will be better for organized play and local game stores will start having tournaments that can generate them money and we can all have a good time. 
Maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. One thing that comes with this reduced, flat power level means that it's very shallow. We don't have the options that we have in a different card pool. That means there are fewer color combinations. I wanted to build a Bant Brawl deck. Nope, can't. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. It's just not there. There is no commander or planeswalker that can fulfill that role. Sucks. Also, really key features of the format, like ramp and card draw and removal, are gonna be really sought after, and there's not gonna be a lot of other good options. For example, ramp. Yeah, ramp is not there like we're used to, and so a lot of people are gonna be playing with the same cards. That's not very fun. And a lot of people are gonna be going towards specific strategies because they need that ramp, they need the card draw, they need the removal. In Commander, sometimes cards are format staples because it's something that the color really truly needs. Let's take Chaos Warp in red, for example. That's a format staple in red because it needs that to be able to deal with these different situations or else you might be screwed playing mono red. Uh, what happens in Brawl Red if your opponent plays a Sandworm Convergence? Do you just scoop? Do you, are you forced to play Universal Solvent, which I'll put on the screen right now because I'm pretty sure you don't remember this crappy card? So that's something where a larger card pool helps a lot. And a shallow format means a solved format. The game stops being fun if there are no creative decisions and if the format isn't balanced, and that sounds like something that's going to be very difficult. I do have one positive thing about this shallow format, is that deck building is actively easier. One thing that I'm not able to do in Commander is just look through cards. I kind of have to search and use my memory to kind of search out specific cards or specific types of cards. Do you know what's awesome is that if I'm building a red deck, I can literally click on standard and look at all of the red standard rares. Or just look at all of the red standard cards. It's not impossible to just look through all of them and find out exactly what you want for this deck. I did it. I looked at every single standard card for these decks. It was fun and it made me feel good like I wasn't leaving anything out. I mean, there were decisions that I made and there were hard cuts and there were inclusions and it was still that good feeling of deck building, but I felt like I really looked at every option I had. And that is so impossible when it comes to Real Commander, so that was kind of a fun experience. The next key feature of this card pool is that it rotates. This is what drives so many people crazy about magic, okay? Rotation means that as standard changes, cards will come into standard as new sets are released, and then other card sets will fall out and become illegal again. Well, that means some good things. You can't solve a format that rotates, because as new cards come out and old cards go away, then you got something fresh. It mixes things up a little bit. You're kind of forced to recreate and reinvent your commander decks. That could be really fun. Uh, also, we played Commander because we don't like this rotating format. We like it when our Commander deck stays the way that it is and I can hold on to it. I have Commander decks that I've kept for years, years and years and years. That would make me crazy if my great Brawl deck suddenly rotated out and that's what's going to happen. I don't know how I feel about that, but here's the great thing for us. When the format rotates, all of those Brawl people that loved their Scarab God deck will rotate into Commander. This is an opportunity for us to gain so many new Commander players. They're gonna be like, wait, I can't play with my Scarab God deck anymore? And we're like, well, no, you can't play it in Brawl, but come on over to Commander and look at this card from 10 years ago that would go great in it, and it's gonna invigorate them and get them excited again. You can totally see this plan happening for a new player, and we're gonna get so many new enthusiastic people into our format if Brawl is a success. And that's why I wanna talk a little bit about openness. If you're watching this video, chances are that you're an enfranchised player. You know something about Commander, and you have the opportunity to grow our format because of Brawl. Brawl could just be a new player format, and that's fine, play it, don't play it, whatever. But there are a few things that we can do as commander players. And I think the first one is let people use Brawl decks in your commander games. 
Say you have three people and someone says, oh, I don't have a commander deck, I just have this brawl deck. You say, come on over, it's fine. We promise no one will mill you out. And let them play. And people are gonna see how great commander is even though they might be in a little bit over their heads. Another thing I really want us to be open about is allowing Planeswalkers as commanders, especially when it comes to the Brawl Planeswalkers. These are not super over-the-top Planeswalkers. Standard Planeswalkers are very fair, and they could definitely be used as commanders. I think if your friends are trying to break the format with their own different commanders, then we can talk about that later. But if someone comes in with a Brawl deck and you're just like, no, they can't play, Nico Bolas, God Pharaoh can't be a commander. No, let them play, see how these Planeswalkers work as commanders, and I guarantee they're going to be totally fair, more than fair. Planeswalkers aren't even that good in commander. Okay, so just give people a chance. I think that's going to be a lot of the openness, and that's how we're going to convert a lot of people from brawl to commander. Next, you might ask the question, why deck lists? Because this is going to be rotating. I mean, odds are we're not going to have tons of different people excited about Brawl and new cards are coming into the format. Okay, just hang on. The deck lists will help us understand what the format could look like. And it helped me come to these conclusions that I've talked about here. And just looking at this deck list could have you understanding, huh, this is what a Brawl deck looks like. These are the shortcomings of these decks. This looks fun. So now let me present to you five different deck decks that are all Brawl decks, and you can check out the full list in the links in the description. But first thing that almost everyone goes to when a new format is introduced, Mono Red. I have Hazard the Fervent leading this Mono Red deck, mostly because of this great ability. Discard a card, Hazard deals two damage to each opponent. In multiplayer formats, each opponent is a very critical keyword, which is why Throne of the God Pharaoh and Chandra Torch of Defiance are great too, dealing damage to each opponent. And man, Chandra giving us ramp, removal, card draw, all in a single Planeswalker? Man, Planeswalkers are so powerful, maybe Chandra should be the commander of this deck. Well, we do need some answers to Planeswalkers. How about the Immortal Sun just shutting them down and giving us tons of value otherwise? Sky Sovereign Council Flagship can deal some damage directly to a Planeswalker and be a huge beater in the air. Man, these artifacts are really good. Maybe we need some answers to artifacts like Abrade or Release the Gremlins. Now, these are value spells that get rid of artifacts because we never just have a destroy target artifact spell really in our commander decks, but we might need that now. And also, we need some card draw. Vance's Blasting Cannons is going to be great, giving us some card draw, along with the Chandra and the Immortal Sun I already mentioned, but also Key to the City, because the key to this deck is getting damage through, and Key to the City makes something unblockable and gives us the card draw we need. And when we get damage through with our unblockable awesome army, then we can double up the damage with cards like Angrath's Marauders, which is very over the top and more fun than good, but come on, it's super fun. But also, Insult to injury, insult, doubling the damage and making sure that it cannot be prevented. And that's what Hazard is all about. Damage, 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 and hopefully you have enough to destroy the entire board. Let's move on to a completely different strategy around the Scarab God. It's the Scarab God. It's the Scourge of Standard. It's that ticket mythic. It's everything we want as a commander as a brawlin commander, especially for an awesome reanimator deck. I think I want to take advantage of all these great creatures that we have with a Panharmonicon. Maybe not because it's good, but because it's awesome. But there's some other cards that can help us reanimate, like God Pharaoh's Gift or Liliana Death's Majesty. And what are we going to reanimate? All of the best Enter the Battlefield abilities ever. Champion of Wits and Hostage Taker, Gaunty, Glint Sleeves Siphoner. Keep going and we talk about Ravenous Chupacabra and Noxious Gear Hulk Walking Ballistas. The list goes on and this is just an amazing amalgam of creatures with value. We're just gonna keep reanimating them until Scarab God just wins us the game on its own. Next, we have the God Pharaoh himself, Nicol Bolas. Four blue, black, red for an awesome planeswalker. And this does a lot of damage straight out of the gate. It can steal cards from your opponent. You can make them discard cards from their hand. It says each opponent, which is really great. And then also just nuking something for seven damage can just remove them from the game. 
And getting up to seven mana of three different colors means that this is going to be a little bit of a harder deck to put together. The mana fixing isn't there. And so this is going to be naturally a more controlling deck. I think one of the greatest cards that you can have is Vraska's Contempt and Never. Vraska's Contempt is instant speed removal and gaining life, but look at that keyword. Exile target Planeswalker. This can take out a Planeswalker. Same thing with Never. Destroy target Planeswalker. See, people are going to be having Planeswalkers as their generals, and we're going to need to have answers for them, and there aren't a lot of answers out there. So these cards are going to be really key, as long with other cards like Hour of Devastation. Each creature loses indestructible until end of turn. That takes care of Hazaret, okay? And then it deals five damage to each creature and each non bolus Planeswalker. Hour of Devastation is going to be a key card in this format. And that's what I mean by it being so shallow. I mean, when a card is so good, it just draws you toward it and into those colors, then, I don't know, maybe that's not healthy for the format. But we can figure that out after we do some playtesting. But I feel like some of these cards I'm mentioning are going to be very important. I also have cards like Commit to Memory and Pull from Tomorrow because the card draw in this controlling deck is going to be really important. But then we need to finish out the game. I'm going to finish it out with Cut to Ribbons. I know, it sounds ridiculous, like, oh, cut to ribbons? Yeah, this card is great, because if you last long enough, ribbons will deal damage to each opponent. Ooh. And Torment of Hailfire can also easily end games. But let's go into a different set of colors for a different type of controlling deck, with Azor the Lawbringer. This massive Sphinx has Sphinx's Revelation tacked onto it, and you know what, in Brawl, we can't cast Sphinx's Revelation, so let's play Azor instead. And we're also going to need answers to stuff, so Gideon's Intervention and Sorcerer's Spyglass can also shut down your opponent's commanders really easily, including those Planeswalker commanders. Sorcerer's Spyglass could be a great removal spell for this format. Next, I want to present another card that I actually have in every deck list that I've listed so far because it's so good, but I think it particularly matches this Azor deck, and that's Mirage Mirror. Oh, Mirage Mirror, you are so good in Normal Commander, I think you're going to be great in Brawl as well. But the main reason why I chose Azorius Control over that Nicobolus Control that I talked about in a previous decklist is for the White, Fumigate, Hour of Revelation, and Settle the Wreckage are all going to be backbreaking. And how many real threats are your opponents going to have? I'm actually wondering that honestly. I mean, how many real game finishers are there? We'll have to see. And I also want to talk about another shortcoming that could exist in the format, and that's Mana Ramp. I'm going to talk about a little bit of Mana Ramp here. Manalith, Cultivator's Caravan, neither of these are very good. How about Treasure Map? Okay, like you're kind of getting there, especially when these things flip. Thematic Compass and Search for Azkanta, all of these great flip lands could be ramp, but they definitely give us value, even though they're tremendously slow. You know, if a lot of people are playing these flip lands, then you might want to also make sure you're running some removal like Field of Ruin, because some of these flip lands are very powerful. And then how else are we going to win in this deck? Well, Azor does a pretty good job of it, but also Approach of the Second Sun. I think that's going to be great, backed up with some removal, mass board wipes, mana ramp, and counter spells. Next up is a deck I'm particularly excited about, and it's Watley Radiant Champion. Watley Radiant Champion is to a green and a white for a three loyalty planeswalker, and it deals with creatures. I think the most important part is the ability to skyrocket Watley's loyalty with that plus ability. It'll basically add as many loyalty counters as you have creatures, and if you have a lot of creatures on the battlefield, boom, the loyalty is going up really high. But then it's that minus the emblem that's going to win you the game. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Oh, that's such a great emblem. So the goal of this deck is to play a bunch of creatures, planned Watley, tick her up, and then immediately ultimate her. And as soon as you get that emblem, man, you have got the game locked up. So if you're flooding the board with creatures, Growing Rites of Itlamok will be a Gaia's Cradle, amazing. Legion's Landing could be legitimate ramp as soon as you flip it over. And Oath of Ajani gives you a discount on only your Huatli, but also pumps your team. And you will have a team. 
Oketra's Monument is a pseudo mana rock, but it also gives us 1-1 one, one warriors that are definitely going to help out our strategy, and Dowsing Dagger will flip into a great piece of mana ramp. But this deck is all about the creatures, let's talk about the creatures. We have cards all up and down the curve dealing tons of damage, we have Adorned Pouncer that we can come back along with Angel of Sanctions, these gives us multiple levels of value. We also have cards that have tremendous protection like Bristling Hydra, but I think most important in this particular deck is the Mana Rip. Channel or Initiate, Druid of the Cowl, uh, the Seer, all of them are creature-based mana ramp, which is something that the other colors just don't have. This is the first time that green is going to have sort of exclusive rights to ramp. Moving on, we also have Rishkar and Servant of the Conduit, Wayward Swordtooth, all of these giving great versions of ramp. And then once we have ramped, we have crazy over-the-top cards like Ronus and Virgis Gearhulk, Walking Ballista. Man, we have so many great creatures in this deck. And then we can protect them with cards like Blossoming Defense and Heroic Intervention. But you can imagine this deck. You flood it with creatures, especially a lot of value creatures. And then you can just draw your opponents into oblivion with your Quatli. And there's nothing wrong with playing Quatli again and then pumping up your creatures to get that damage through and finish out the game. All right, so what are my impressions of Brawl overall? I don't know if it's for me. I don't like that the format rotates. I don't know if I want to buy standard cards, but it looks so fun. I want to play with these decks. I spent a lot of time building them and now I really, really want to play with them. I don't know if I want to invest in them. Do you know what? Maybe if I get into drafting a lot more, and uh, maybe this could work out really well together. I draft a lot, I put together a brawl deck, I take the cards I really like and turn them into commander decks. I don't know. I'm really torn, and I want to know what you think. Is brawl for you? Let me know in the comments down below. And I want to thank my patrons. Thank you so much, patrons. And thank you to everyone watching this. Remember, no matter what, even if Brawl is not your thing, I think it's important that we support it, we're enthusiastic about it, that we make sure that we get converts from Brawl into our format. We want more people playing Commander, we want it to be a healthy format with new players, and I think that Brawl is going to be great for all of us. I want to thank you guys so much, and I'll see y'all really soon. I will have another video this week, two videos this week, because this Brawl video is special, I'm so excited. I'll see you really soon. Bye.